Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Thursday, April 29th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in 126 days. The game against Michigan in 212 days. Today is quite possibly the most anticipated day in the history of Buckeye Scoop. It is the four wise men takeover on our Ask the Insiders message board. If you are someone who has been around the Ohio State internet for a while, you know what a big deal that is. And if you don't, my guest today is here to explain it to you. He is Nevada Buck. He is Buckeye Scoop's ultimate insider. He's been the guy who's been delivering scoops on everything from what was going to happen with the Big Ten season last fall to the Big Ten's COVID testing protocols, just to fun insider reports from practice. Hey, who's leading in the quarterback competition? Which young guys are flashing? Nevada, I'm sure people wonder, like, how the heck can this one guy have insider information about so many different things? So can you explain a little bit about the wise men and how this all kind of got started? Well, you know, it, it's, Tom, it's been, it's been something that's been kind of evolving over I, I guess I, I look back and it's, you know, it's been almost 20 years and uh, I guess it was 20 years ago that I, I really started kind of tapping into sources that I had from, uh, from other walks of life that were also fans of Ohio State football and, and started um, kind of sharing information and comparing notes and, and it, it eventually you know, evolved into where I had these four primary sources that all have their different areas of specialty and have some really good insight to how's their football for a variety of different reasons, whether it be access or information or uh, being around the program or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. But they've, uh, they've been terrific, uh, terrific resources. And we, and we, we haven't been together in one place in years. I mean, it's literally been years and it's happening. It's happening. And, uh, it's an all-day takeover on the site, so it's going to be a, an opportunity for people to ask questions, you know, directly to the wise men and, and uh, get some great answers, some great stories, some uh, unbelievable anecdotes and insider things and stuff they'd never heard before. And it's uh, it's going to be a ball, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, earlier this week, I don't remember if it was on Buckeye Weekly or on the Morning Scoop, but I said you were you were like the man behind the curtain, this mysterious figure, and then these guys are like the guys behind the curtain, behind the curtain, like they they're the you know the the wise men behind the guy behind the curtain. It, it has been a long time since you said like you said that you've had a day like this with them actually answering questions directly and talking about talking about this stuff and answering these questions. What kind of things do people ask you about the most with regard to them? Like what what are people most interested in hearing of, about from them? You know, uh, people really like to hear old recruiting stories. You know, what happened with this guy? Why didn't we get him? How did we get him? Uh, those types, those those things are always always favorites of the, the people. And you know, we'll talk about names that you haven't thought about in twenty years or twenty five <laughs> years or longer. And um, that's that's always kind of fun to take those little strolls down memory lanes or have insights about how people got hired or how people got fired or. How did Urban Meyer come to Ohio State, or how did Jim Trussell end up leaving Ohio State, and uh, Glenn Mason stories, and I mean, just just all sorts of great little uh, things like that. People are always asking about, me. and um, the uh, the wives that are always are always happy to uh, to talk about that stuff because that's right in their wheelhouse and and something that they're uh, very conversant on, and it's uh, it's going to be a ball. It's really going to be a lot of fun. Well, in the past, when I've had you on, I know we've talked about some of the biggest stories you've broken you know, in connection with the wise men. So, you know, the Urban Meyer hiring and Terrell Pryor coming to Ohio State, that kind of stuff. Uh, today, I want to ask you about something that's a little different. G- give us like a either the the weirdest story that you've ever broken on, on you know, with in conjunction with one of the wise men, the funniest story. Like what's, what's one that like stands out to you that's like, you know, it wasn't the most exciting story. It wasn't the biggest headline making story. It was just like, this is one that stands out just because it is just a little weird, a little different, a little funny, whatever. We, you know, one that always kind of sticks in my brain, and, and, and this one, this one was kind of a big story, but it wasn't. But it was. But at the time when it when when they when I got called with this, I did, didn't have any idea what the hell he was talking about. Was Robert Smith leaving the Ohio State football program? Because I remember that one completely, like, was a shock. You know, because you remember Robert Smith came in as you know, uh, yeah, you know, one of the most heralded recruits ever to come to Ohio State, and and then all of a sudden. I had the information that that he's that there was some sort of uh, issue with Elliot Uzlock and that, that, that all of a sudden Robert Smith isn't going to play football in medical school. And I I, I just I, I remember breaking that and and thinking to myself, 
how in the hell does this happen? How, do, how does a football player that's, uh, you know, a five-star, you know, for sure NFL guy, and, and actually Robert did, did end up coming back and going out of the NFL, but he's leaving the football team to for, so he can study more. It, that, that one was always one of the all-time weird ones. Um, and, and like I said, I, I had that before anybody had that. And, and uh, it was really, a, that one always stuck out to me as being the one really one for the record books because that, that was super odd. If you're wondering how long uh, how long Nevada has been doing this, uh, I was in middle school when that story happened. So uh, <laughs> I am uh, I am now old enough that it sounds like popcorn when I walk up and down the stairs. So yeah, it is uh, it, it is that it has been a minute since I was in middle school. So yes, Nevada has Nevada has been on this uh, do, doing this for uh, decades now. You know, and so that will all be happening today at BuckeyeScoop.com and our Ask the Insiders board. Uh, you just need to be a member of the site to get access to that and all of our other great features. So that is at BuckeyeScoop.com. You should sign up and become a member because that seems like that's going to be a pretty fun day today. I'm lo- really looking forward to it. Do it. Um, there was something shocking that happened on that that same Ask the Insiders board this week. I, I was I was blown away. For the first time since the site launched, you posted something and I thought, oh, wow, he's definitely wrong about that. Uh, this was a conversation <laughs> about the possibility of college football playoff expansion. You know, I'm pretty strongly in favor of that for a variety of reasons. But you think it's something that's not only going to be bad for the sport, but also for Ohio State's chances of potentially winning a national championship. So I, I thought this was a fascinating conversation. This was a long, like pages and pages of people going back and forth and explaining their thinking. So can you explain why you think both of those things, that, that it's potentially a negative for college football as a sport, but also for Ohio State as a program? Uh, okay. Here's, here's the way that I view the world on this is that I, I, I'm not a fan of college basketball. And the reason I'm not a fan of college basketball is because I, I like it during March Madness, but during the regular season when Ohio State's playing a game against Michigan or Ohio State's playing a big out-of-conference game against Duke or North Carolina, I know that the result doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter to be seated. The difference between being, being seated three or five or seven or nine or two or 12, it doesn't matter. Just be in the dance and you got a chance and you can got to go on. And I just don't want to lose the drama. I, I love the pit in my stomach feeling every week in, in college football where you just know that every game that you just can't afford to, to trip up. And, and when you do that, it's, it's going to be devastatingly impactful as to you either your chances of even, you know, participating and having a shot at the national championship, or, or you might be eliminated altogether with one horrible game. And I like that because I like the fact that college football recognizes season long excellence. And to me, that makes it one of the most unique things in all the sports. It's not a tournament. It's not about who gets the hottest at the end. It's about season long excellence and anything that, you know, I, I wouldn't want to go into season thinking, Oh, it doesn't matter what we do. We're, we're going to be in the playoff anyway. Let's just let's just get healthy. Let's just get hot at the end of the year. Um, you know, we're going to be in the playoffs because to me that would that would take away some of the a lot of the allure of college football for me in general, and I, and I think football would be less for that. As for Ohio State's chances, um, I just look at the, the the end of the season where you're playing Michigan. I mean, I, I go back on the old team. Look at the 2002 team. We had to navigate a game against Michigan at the end of the year in which we won 14 to nine. And then we had to beat Miami. Okay. Big, big, big order. Now the path would be beat Michigan, win the big 10 championship game, win a first playoff game against the top eight opponent, win a second game against the top four opponent, and then play Miami. And so would that great 2002 story be written? Probably not. So that's my uh, that's my argument against it. And I'm as I always say, I reserve the right to change my mind or to be influenced the other side. But that's how I see the world. It, it, that's really it, it. It's interesting because you're. I think you're exactly right about the 2002 team and potentially the 2014 team having. You know, you add another game that makes it a tougher road as well. But then there's the alt. You know, the flip side of that is the 2005 team, for example. The 2005 team you know, lost to Texas very early in the year when they didn't know who the quarterback was going to be. They'd lost kind of a weird game at Penn State, one of those very early whiteout games. And then by the end of the year, they were just steamrolling people and they just crushed Notre Dame in a uh, in the Fiesta Bowl in a game that uh, 
they won by 14 and it was like at the end of the game you're like how was that not a 30 point win it was one of the more dominating 14 point wins you'll ever see so you know from an ohio state perspective I think there's an argument that if there's an 18 playoff, and this was this was the context we were kind of framing this in on when we were talking about it on the board was, you know, the, the NCAA is looking at a bunch of in the college football playoff, they're looking at a bunch of different possibilities, six team, 18, 10 team, 12 team, 16 team. We were kind of framing it around the conversation of an 18 playoff where it's like the five power conference teams, their champions all get an auto bid, one group of five teams, so ACC or or excuse me, AAC, uh, Mountain West, Sun Belt, you know, MAC, those conferences, one of them potentially gets uh, an auto bid um, the same way they get an auto bid to the New Year Six right now. And then there's like two at-large teams. So my argument would be there is no program that would benefit more than Ohio State right now in that because the road gets harder for everyone. You know, it's not like Ohio State would be the only team that has to play those extra games. But then someone actually has to win each year. It wasn't, you know, this isn't like, you have to run a four minute mile and then they put hurdles in front of you. And if no one does it, you don't do it. Like someone is going to win the race no matter what. So I think there's a pretty good chance Ohio state would have made the playoff every year since the playoff started under an 18 playoff, which means that, you know, yes, there's an extra game to win in 2014 or a couple extra games in 2002, but then the 2005 team gets in. It has a chance to play for a national championship. The 2015 team, which just had that one bad game against Michigan state gets a chance to play for a championship. 2013, 2017, 2018 with Dwayne Haskins, you know, at the end of the year, they were kind of rolling there. You know, that's a lot of cracks at the title. To me, it seems like they average at least, you know, on average, they're going to win at least one of those, which they did now, if not more. So, you know, you win, maybe, maybe you don't win 2015, but you were 14, but you win 2015 and you win 2018 or something like that. From the broader perspective, though, I, I don't think it's great for the sport that functionally half of FBS has zero access to the national title under the current system. You know, you've had Western Michigan, UCF, Cincinnati teams all go unbeaten in the regular season, and they just get this like pat on the head from the committee, and they get shuffled off to go play in the Peach Bowl, and it's like, oh, that's great. Look at you. Good for you. And you know, I know the argument but, but, is that- but, but, you know, but, but you know, the irony of that, Tom, is that before the BCS and before the, you know, I, I'm old enough to remember when they're actually- was no playoff and there was no BCS. And mm-hmm. you, back in that era, you had teams like BYU win the national championship. The, and, you, you know, yeah. you know, so it's like, we, while we've tried to say, you know, we want to include everybody actually under that, you know, back in those days, Syracuse could win a national championship or Minnesota could win a national championship or, or hell, Michigan could win a national championship. <laughs> oh, come uh, on, come on. No one's going to believe that. <laughs> there. I mean, BYU won the three team national championship and it's like i you know i liked the debate i love the, the the arguments over the water cooler about which game was more impressive the win over fc in the rose bowl or over you know the oklahoma game in the orange bowl i think that stuff was great for college football and it made for lively debate and it made for arguments and discussions and i don't think everything has to be settled on the field i don't think it has to be that way because like I said, I I enjoy the journey, and you know, my, my counter to the 2005 season would be don't don't lose against Penn State. You know, you, you already lost to Texas, shouldn't have lost that game. You, got, you know, you know, Nate Sally, you got to get over there. <laughs> you got to cover Swede, get over there. Don't lose to Penn State. And you, you know, I, I I if you think about all the the, the just the heart wrenching moments that you know as a fan that wants to just rip your soul out, you know. Most of those, for me, were, are like these regular season games where we tripped up along the way. And, and you know something? I love the drama. Love the drama, and I just would, would hate to lose that. But that's, like I said, that's just my, uh, my two cents on it. And, and I, damn, I know I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, the funny thing, I, I, I'm old enough to remember Colorado and Georgia Tech splitting the national championship in 1990, right. which is, you know, right. you, you try and parse that sentence. Well, they split the national championship, and the two teams were Colorado and Georgia Tech. Like, what, which part of that makes the least sentence, the least sense to someone who's uh, just started, started following the sport in the last 10 years or so? But, you know, BYU, that 1984 season was crazy because they beat a 6-6 six and six Michigan team in the Holiday Bowl to win the national championship. And it was because, like, everyone remembers the 2007 season being just bananas with upsets early. That was the 1984 season. It was like all the great teams were down that year, and you had a bunch of upsets early in the year, and it was like at the end of the year, BYU was the only one standing. Um, you know, I think one thing that's interesting is the, the idea of making regular season games meaningful or not meaningful is, you know, right now, 
if you're playing in a conference that is not a power conference team, the regular season, if you're if you're defining the regular season as being meaningful, if you're playing for a national championship, they're basically all out already for this fall. And then, you know, 80 percent of regular season games are meaningless after October 1st because all those teams are out of it already. So if you give the power five conference champions auto bids and you give one to a group of five champion and then, you know, you two at large, it's like we talked about. That makes the regular season games potentially very meaningful because, you know, more meaningful, not less, because you're, you know, everyone, every Pac-12 game, if you are a team playing, you know, competing for the Pac-12 championship, even if you have a loss, you're all, you're still in the national championship race. And, you know, to me, the comparison to the NCAA basketball tournament made earlier is a little bit off because you, you know, I went back and looked earlier this week, more than half of the Power Five conference teams made the tournament, the basketball tournament this year. So under this, you're going from like four out of 65 to seven out of 65. So it's not, you know, it's not 35 out of 65. If it's the 16 team, 32 team, I think it, that's more of an apt comparison. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's where I stand on it. I will let you have the last word on this before we wrap things up. I, I, I just think that if you look at the teams in college basketball, I think March Madness is kind of an illusion. And if you really look at the teams that really have a chance at winning the national championship, it's, it's much smaller than the hundreds of teams that are out there. It's, you know, the idea of little Milan high school winning in Hoosiers and Jimmy Chitwith hitting the last shot. Now, nah, you know, it's, it's the same teams that win the national championship of basketball. And you could, you could go in, every year and knock off the top 10 or top 20. And you know, that's the, that's the ones who get the real chance at winning the title. I think it's the same thing in, in, in football. And, uh, but like I said, I, 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 I think it's great. I, I think it was great for the sport when they had split titles. And, and you know, like you said, Georgia Tech and Colorado and BYU. And uh, I mean, come on, that, that, that sounds pretty good right now, doesn't it? So it's like <laughs> you got to be careful what you wish for. As someone who embraces the stupidity of college football more than just about anyone else, I, I, I know exactly where you're coming from. I, I totally get it. You're wrong. That's okay. You're right. He's he's wrong. He's right about everything else. He's wrong about this. He is still right about everything else. Nevada, thank you as always for joining me. Really appreciate it. And uh, really looking forward to uh, today on the board. That should be a lot of fun. Great. Thanks for having me, Tom. All right. So you should make sure you are also on the Ask the Insiders board today, along with Nevada and his wise men. That should be really just an incredible and fun day. I am legitimately excited for it. I am not kidding. That should be a blast. That will all be at BuckeyeScoop.com. You just need to sign up to become a member today and you'll have access to that Ask the Insiders board, plus our great team of insiders, all our great reporting, all of the rumors, all the stuff we're hearing. It's all happening at BuckeyeScoop.com. You can also find our content on YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop. Just hit that subscribe button right there and you'll get notified every time we post something new, whether it's a podcast, an interview with the players and coaches, video from camp, interviews with the prospects. We do all sorts of great fun stuff there. It's all free. It's all at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. And finally, check out all of our podcasts. They're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, you name it. We are there. Just search Buckeye Scoop to find all of those. You can subscribe right there so you never miss an episode and also leave us a five-star rating and review, which will help other folks find those shows as well. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.